What did I tell you was going to happen? I had to take the glasses off for this one. What did I tell you was going to happen? I told you crimes in these times are being calculated and put into a database. And the people who are committing these crimes, AI technology is going to catch up to these people. And the new way of controlling these people is going to be. It's genius. Let's take a look, y'all. And if you're new to this channel, you know what to do to this channel. Subscribe right now. Welcome to Cognify, a facility what? designed to treat criminals like patients. Instead of spending years in an actual prison cell, prisoners could finish their sentence here in just a few minutes. Cognify could someday create and implant artificial memories directly into the prisoner's brain. These complex, vivid, and lifelike memories are created in real time using AI-generated content. Depending on the seriousness of the subject's crime and their sentence, the memories could be tailored to the rehabilitation needs of each subject. The artificial memories implanted by Cognify would be seamlessly incorporated into the existing neural networks of the brain, preventing cognitive dissonance and ensuring the subject experiences the memories as if they were real. The Cognify concept offers a new approach to criminal rehabilitation, transforming how society deals with offenders by focusing on rehabilitation rather than punishment. First, the prisoner is given a choice, either spending tens of years in a prison cell or seeking fast-track rehabilitation through artificial memory implantation. If the prisoner chooses to undergo fast-track rehabilitation, the Cognify device is used. Next, the prisoner undergoes high-resolution brain scanning to create a detailed map of their neural pathways. This brain map helps guide the Cognify device to target specific brain regions responsible for memory, reasoning, and logical thinking, such as the hippocampus, prefrontal cortex, amygdala, parietal lobe, and anterior cingulate cortex. Once the target brain regions are identified, Cognify is then placed around the head of the prisoner. The intensity and the type of artificial memories is then adjusted depending on the crime. Inside the criminal's mind, time would pass differently, slower than in real life, making them experience years worth of artificial memories in just a few minutes. Synthetic memories are customized depending on the crime committed and the unique brain structure and psychological profile of the individual. Violent offenders could experience memories that are designed to trigger empathy and remorse. Seeing their crime from the perspective of their victim, feeling their pain and suffering firsthand. Some memories are designed to trigger consequences and trauma. Such memories could simulate the long-term consequences of violent actions, such as the grief of the victim's family or the physical and emotional trauma endured by the victim. Artificial memories could cover a wide range of crimes, including domestic violence, hate crimes and discrimination, embezzlement, insider trading, theft and fraud. Cognify Emotion Regulation System could modulate neurotransmitters and hormones to induce specific emotional states, such as remorse or regret, which is crucial for rehabilitation. Real-time monitoring and feedback mechanisms could track the prisoner's neural responses throughout the process allowing the system to adapt and optimize the rehabilitation in real time with new visuals, sensation, and realistic AI-generated content. To ensure the long-term effect of the therapy session, the memories could become permanent, fully integrated into the subject's mind, as if they were part of their own personal experiences. While subjects are undergoing therapy session, valuable data are collected from all the prisoners into a central computer for scientific research, which will help understand the criminal mind and determine the best approach to tackle crimes in society. AI-driven analytics could enhance the device's functionality, optimizing future procedures based on gathered data and insights. Cognify could feature encrypted storage for sensitive prisoner information and rehabilitation data. A compact and portable design would allow Cognify to be used anywhere in the world. It would be constructed with durable materials to withstand frequent use. Its energy-efficient design would ensure long operational life, reducing the need for frequent recharges. It would have the ability to integrate seamlessly with other prison systems, like security cameras and biometric identification. 
Once the therapy session is concluded, family members of the subject could be provided with a comprehensive report on the new artificial memories that have been implanted, offering them a chance to adjust to the subject's new, positive personality traits. The subject is then released back into society to start a new life away from crimes. The Cognify concept could revolutionize the criminal justice system by significantly reducing the need for long-term incarceration and its associated costs. Traditional prisons require substantial budgets for construction, maintenance, staffing, and prisoner care, including food, health care, and rehabilitation programs. By replacing extended prison sentences with brief intensive rehabilitation through artificial memory implantation, the costs of maintaining prison facilities and supporting inmates could be drastically lowered. The funds saved from reduced incarceration and recidivism rates could be reallocated to other critical areas. These might include education, health care, infrastructure development, social welfare programs, or research and development initiatives that benefit society as a whole. By rehabilitating offenders more quickly, Cognify could enable them to reintegrate into society sooner and contribute to the workforce. This increased productivity could boost the economy and generate tax revenue, further offsetting the initial investment in such technology. Successful rehabilitation through Cognify could lead to safer communities, reduced crime rates, and improved social well-being. This could have far-reaching positive impacts on individuals, families, and society as a whole, contributing to a more stable and prosperous future. Apart from treating criminals, Cognify could also be used to treat severe memory loss by helping patients recall their past memories. It could also treat patients with PTSD by implanting positive memories that replace the negative ones. It is the ultimate in crime fighting. Police are notified before a crime happens so that they can catch the criminal in the act. Or even before the act happens. Or maybe even before that person has thought about committing the act. We've seen it before, but we've seen it in TV shows and movies and books. Now, however, we might actually see it in the real world. Take a look. Solving crimes before they happen. We'll send a protection team as soon as we lock location. It is called pre-crime, and it's a concept made famous by the 2002 movie Minority Report. In the film and the short story it was based on, psychics tip off authorities about murders before they happen so that police can arrest the would-be murderers before anybody dies. We've got a third party. The film is set in 2054, 30 years from now. But experts say pre-crime predictions are already possible. And we don't need psychics to make them. We just need artificial intelligence, AI. Data analysts and social scientists at the University of Chicago say that they've developed an algorithm that can predict future crimes one week in advance. They loaded it with three years worth of data, focusing on violent crimes like homicide and assault, and property crimes like burglary and car theft. Then the algorithm divided the city into tiles, roughly a thousand feet apart, and calculated hotspots based on where the recent crimes happened. A week later, when the team reviewed the actual police blotters, they found that 90% of Chicago's murders, assaults, and thefts had happened in the hotspots selected by the algorithm. They tried the model in seven other cities, and the results were almost identical. But what about catching or even preempting the perps? It turns out the algorithm can help with that too. Chicago police used it to compile a list of people who might one day be involved in a violent crime, either as a victim or a perpetrator. The list was made up of people who spent time in one of the algorithm's hotspots and whose demographics, their age, gender, and race, match criminals and victims of the past. Other AI crime models take it a step further. For years now, judges and parole officers 
have been using artificial intelligence to calculate an inmate's chance of reoffending. Factors that play in those algorithms include prior convictions, education, and past employment. The model then calculates just how likely that person is to commit another crime and what crime it might be. The ultimate goal, say the promoters of AI-based crime fighting, is to combine these models to pinpoint where a crime might happen, who the victim might be, and which potential suspects were in the area at the time. And on paper, that just seems like a great idea. So why aren't we doing it? Well, it turns out there's a flaw in those models. It's us. It's human beings. Since the algorithms are chewing on data from people, they have the very same blind spots and biases that people have. The crime hotspots that were pinpointed in Chicago and the other cities were mostly black and Latino neighborhoods. The list of potential victims and suspects included 56% of the black men in Chicago, whether they had criminal backgrounds or not. And the algorithms used for parole decisions were far more likely to label white inmates incorrectly as low risk than inmates of color. But that doesn't necessarily mean that there isn't a future for pre-crime predictions. Experts say the best way to fix the bad data is with more data. The more information an AI system gets, the more time it gets to learn, and the better it will be at spotting the prejudices and flaws in our own minds. But that could take a while, probably decades. We may even have to wait until 2054. A new twist on something New Yorkers have seen before, the NYPD's Crime Stoppers truck. Now with new state-of-the-art technology that gives detectives another tool while fighting crime right at their fingertips. While on scene, its technology is able to download and play back video footage on its LED screens. And police say these trucks are needed to move around the city and help get the community involved in crime fighting. And it's working. From quickly flooding a Bronx neighborhood with images of a rape suspect last week to immediately responding to tips that led police to Frank James, a Wisconsin man accused of shooting 10 people on a crowded Brooklyn train and injuring more than a dozen others last year. New York City Crime Stoppers. Funding comes from the Police Foundation. So far, the foundation paid out more than $3 million in Crime Stoppers reward money to the public for tips leading to an arrest and an indictment. All calls are anonymous. We don't have caller ID. We don't record the calls. Even with all of this success, the NYPD still needs your help cracking cases. Right now, detectives are working around the clock, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. If you have any information on a crime that happened within the five boroughs, call Crime Stoppers. The number's right there. It's 800-577-TIPS. In lower Manhattan, Nicole Johnson, PIX11 News. That right there, well, find everything. I mean, almost car, everything. That's not my everything. Life. You're not hiding anything. You know what I'm saying? I'm here. I'm here. Automated license plate reader, similar to the one responsible for capturing a suspected serial killer. I'm grateful that this suspect in this case is in custody. Police say 33 year old Jared Powell murdered four men in four days, a Los Angeles County worker, and three homeless men. We know there's controversy out there about the usage of this system. If we did not enter that plate into the system, uh, this individual that we believe is responsible for at least four murders may have been out there and re-offended. Here's how the technology works. Investigators enter a license plate number into the system. If that vehicle passes a license plate reader like this, it pings, alerting police. 
That's what happened Thursday when Powell's car entered Beverly Hills. This isn't broad surveillance. You don't have everyone's license plate number in the system, do you? No, it doesn't work like that. That alerts on something that an officer put into the database, which tells them this vehicle's wanted. By 2019, a state audit found 230 California law enforcement agencies were using an ALPR system. San Jose just installed more readers, but this year, the city council in Coachella rejected a plan to add cameras to their city. Civil liberties groups have long raised privacy concerns and feared the technology could be abused. Given the hazard of political spying with these kinds of uh, high-tech surveillance technologies, uh, it is very important that there be strict safeguards, including rapid deletion of the information that has been collected and limits on when it can be shared. Beverly Hills police say they delete footage after 13 months, and the technology helps them track only specific suspects. What it does is allow us to stop the right person in the right vehicle, and uh, again, I call that precision policing. Dana Griffin, NBC News, Los Angeles. Thanks for watching. Sports car up ahead won't stop. Then, something happens you might expect in a Spider-Man movie. A high-tech device is being deployed to bring Daddy. the high-speed chase to a screeching halt. It's like a netting from a giant spider web. Look how it's activated under the rear tire. It wraps around the tire of the fleeing vehicle and stops all forward motion. And get this, the device, which is being introduced by police departments everywhere, was invented by a roofer with zero law enforcement experience. Leonard Stock had the idea after watching a deadly high-speed chase live on TV. As I was watching it, I was just cringing when I would see that happen. I hope that lives are being saved. That's the only reason I'm doing this. Here's a good look at how it works. As the net is unfurled, police get as close as they can to the fleeing suspects. Whoosh, there it goes. The chase is brought to an end without anyone getting injured. Some people do think that it shoots out of the police vehicle, but it actually stays attached to the grappler unit and is directed into the tire. In the most recent case in Florida, two 17-year-old suspected carjackers are learning you can't evade the grappler. An Atlanta apartment complex is testing a new way to keep residents safe. It's enlisting the help of a robot. I love it at Lives Grace King showing us how it all works. This is Steel Fourth Ward, which is a vibrant, walkable, uh, thriving neighborhood, but we have uh, pockets of crime that tend to pop up. In the old Fourth Ward, data shows nearly half of all crimes against people happen along Boulevard. They got bullet flying all down the street. APD reported nearly 35 cases of assault, rape, murder, and intimidation on this road in the last seven months alone. I get scared. I hear everything, see everything. That's what a new crime-deterring neighbor hopes to change. It's a unique thing. It's the first time I've seen this in the city. And I think it raises questions as to what's the future of public safety, how much of it is tech, how much of it is people. Atlanta City Councilman Amir Faroqi is talking about this guy, a five foot six autonomous what? surveillance robot weighing in at nearly 420 pounds. It should lead to a um, an honest and reflective conversation about what do we want public safety to look like and what role does technology play. In a statement, the Wingate apartment complex on Boulevard tells 11 Alive this is part of its new video services that will provide automated notices and take remediation actions like calling APD directly. On the mobile side, it's looking for things that are out of place. What's not right in the area for that given time of day or that level of activity or this particular part of a building? Stacy Stevens with Nightscope, the company behind the robot, says it's essentially a mobile surveillance camera that can use AI to determine potential threats. Robots are not out there collecting your private information. This is looking for information that's publicly available. The extra set of eyes can prompt questions about privacy. Privacy, you need that. We don't hardly get it anymore. But residents like Andre Johnson feel that sacrifice is worth it. If they see any trouble going on, they automatically send the police in. So you're more safer than it used to be right now. The robot's employer, in this case Wingate, owns the data. They told me they plan to use it as an additional source of information for APD, among other things, and that its retention policy varies. In the old fourth... First reporter Joshua Skinner shows us the state-of-the-art technology that is designed to keep you safe. Over the past six months, nearly half the crime committed on the old fourth ward 
has come on this stretch of Boulevard Road, which is why... What in the world is going on? A security robot is what's going on, but you can call him. Spunky. Spunky. Yes, Spunky. And Spunky Spunky. patrols the sidewalks in front of Station 464 and 496 apartments on Boulevard Northeast. It might seem a bit odd, but due to pockets of crime nearby, residents like Brenda say this is a good thing. Yes. It's needed. Uh, It's very much so needed. Spunky is actually a K5 robot created by a couple. At first glance, it's like a tool right off of Batman's belt. The only thing electrical is the actual laser, which is your sight. It's all mechanical. It's called the Bola Wrap, and the concept is quite simple. This device shoots out a rope with little hooks on each end. The rope wraps around a suspect, and they are immobilized long enough for officers to detain them. It's kind of like putting handcuffs on someone at a distance and there's really no pain associated to it. And there's a psychological component as well. I think probably the biggest benefit to it is not just the wrapping, but it's loud. Um, And because of that loudness, it creates kind of that startled effect or surprise. You know, I've been wrapped several times, I've wrapped several people, and it's really hard when you're getting wrapped to not look where you're getting wrapped. So, to figure out what exactly it feels like to get hit with a bola wrap, we decided to try it ourselves. Bola, bola, bola. Bola, bola, bola. So with two wraps, I am not going anywhere. I mean, this is tight. Assuming it hooked really well in your clothing, you're not gonna be able to break the cord, but if I gave you enough time, you'd probably be able to move your legs around and eventually get it to come off. But the goal is to just buy a couple of seconds so that you can come in and make the arrest. Yep, yep, and do it safely with no one getting getting hurt. Sergeant Brant Thompson helped bring the new device to Oregon and has used it himself in the field. The particular call I had was a gentleman um, in crisis, um, whether that was mental health or drug induced but or a combination, was throwing stuff in the middle of the road, um, was not complying with us at all, and there had been an earlier call that he had been armed with a knife. I got a report earlier that he had a knife, so I'm concerned about that. Now, granted, I didn't see a knife during my inter- encounter with him. He wouldn't comply, he was walking away. You're staying here, you're being detained right now. So instead of just running up, and getting in a big fight, I uh, was able to deploy this from several feet away. It startled him, and we were able to take him into custody with relatively no incident. Get on the ground! I told you bola, bola, bola. bola wraps are currently being used by just four law enforcement departments in Oregon, while to the north, there are 20 agencies in Washington using the device. So you all have been using this bola wrap for about three years. Is this something that you think more law enforcement officers, more law enforcement departments should be using? I mean, I can't speak for every department in the state. Everyone deals with different things. You know, agencies are small to really large. Um, I can tell you that the benef- the potential benefits of the device are worth the purchase. You know, for us, it was a pretty big deal to spring for, I think it was like $9,000 was the initial purchase price, and that's a lot of money for us. And I know there's a lot of budgetary constraints right now across the state. Um, but I think the benefits of what the device could do mm. Even in one scenario, if you are able to save one person with this, I think it's worth the money investment. It's an old school concept with some high tech upgrades and a. Wow, all I gotta say about this man, you know, criminals, y'all got another thing coming, man. The crime nowadays is just bad. It's sad that they're hurting innocent people. So all of these new implications when it comes to fighting crime, a lot of good people. We're all for it because at the end of the day, there's a lot of people out there just committing wicked things and doing wicked things to people that don't even deserve it. So, I don't know. What you guys let me know what you think down below. Leave your comments down below. Do you feel like it's a little bit too much or is it going to be more you feel like they need more of this in different communities that violence is happening at a rapid rate? Until next time, it's your boy Mickey Fenty, a.k.a. Mickey Made It. If you're new to this channel, you know what to do to this channel. Subscribe.